Hello and welcome to the Walking Talking Mock Series for the GCSE Computer Science Paper 2 exams for MedExcel. I'm Paul Long and I started teaching computer science in 1997. I've been a principal examiner and moderator for two different exam boards. I was part of a team that wrote one of the new GCSE computer science specifications and I have helped edXL with the development of their new specification and sample exam papers. I'm also an Ofqual expert and a senior lead facilitator for the National Centre for Computing Education, where I've also been a subject matter expert. I want to share with you my experience of working in the exam system for over 20 years so that you can improve how you perform in exams. The purpose of the Walking Talking Mocks is to show you how I would approach each exam paper, the sort of things that examiners will be looking for, how to avoid silly mistakes, how to ensure you've answered all parts of the question, and how to pick up marks even if the question looks difficult. For this introductory video, I want to give you some general advice, which is appropriate for every Edexcel programming paper. Once you have watched this video, I'm sure that you will want to visit www.paullong.net forward slash WTMocks to explore the walking talking mocks which take you step by step through each question for each Paper 2 exam from Edexcel's GCSE in Computer Science. First of all, let's have a look at how I would arrange my screen at the beginning of the exam. At this point, the exam has not started. I've logged on, opened the folder with the files, I've opened the programming language subset, the PLS, and I've opened idle. All of this can be done before the exam starts. I can also check that the files are in the folder, although I'm not allowed to open them just yet. Having the PLS open means that I can easily search for the syntax of a command. For example, let's search for is upper. So I've just done control F to find, I'll search for it and it's found it straight away. Now this time I'm going to try and search for a for loop. So I'm going to put in for. Ah, coming up with 40 different options. So in this case, what we really need to do is go back up to the contents page, find out where iteration is. And here we go, we've got repetition and iteration on page seven. And then we can go straight to page seven and find the syntax for the for loop. Now, having a PLS open on your screen is useful if you want to do a quick search, but it's using up a lot of screen space. Therefore, you also have a printed copy of a PLS and I would recommend using a printed copy when you need to use the contents page to find something and just using the digital copy when you can do a control F style search. Next, I've got the Python shell for idle open, ready to use. Before the exam starts, I'm going to check that line numbers are going to show when using new windows. Line numbers are essential for keeping track of the code, especially as questions always make direct reference to those line numbers. To do this, I'm going to go to Options and then Configure Idle. Then I'm going to go to General and we're going to select this checkbox here next to show line numbers in new windows. Now let's test and see if it works by opening a new window. And there we can see the line number one. Well, let's just check uh, that everything else is working okay. So look, as I press the enter key a few times, we can see those line numbers coming up. The reason I'm using idle is because that's probably what most of you are using. However, if I was taking the exam myself, I would use a more powerful IDE such as Fonny. Now, as you can see, Fonny has the line numbers set by default. 
It also has a separate window for the shell. So I don't have to keep switching between a programming window and the shell. I can therefore see error messages and my code at the same time. The other useful feature of Funny is that it has a debugging feature. This will let you run your code one line at a time so that you can see exactly where an error occurs. One final thing I've got open is an app called Notepad++. This is similar to the standard Notepad that comes with Windows, but it has a lot of additional features. For example, it also has line numbers. And as you can see as well, it's showing hidden characters such as line breaks, although I do need to actually change the settings in order for that to show. So if we go to view, show symbol, you can see here how I can toggle this on and off. Now that's really useful when we're working with a text file in Python and we need to see where the line breaks are occurring. I'm now ready for when the invigilator tells me I may begin the exam. As soon as the invigilator says I can start, I'm going to make two copies of all the student files. So here is the student files folder. It's called student coding. And by selecting this folder, I can copy it and paste it. So I'm going to copy it here and I'm going to paste it twice. Now I'm pasting it twice so that I've got a backup copy and I've got another copy that I'm going to use. Now before we carry on, some of you may find the files have been saved in a secure shared storage folder and so you need to copy them from there to your personal storage area first. This is something that you could legitimately do before the exam begins. Now one of these copies I'm going to have as my backup, so I'll leave that one as copy. And if I look at the instructions, the instructions tell me that I have got to save all new and amended code using the file name provided and place it in the completed coding folder. So I'm going to rename one of these folders as completed coding. This way I won't forget to do it later and I can also revert to one of the originals if I need to. That means that if I make an error in my code and it's made a right mess of it, I can just go back to the original and start again. From now on, I'm going to work with these files in the completed coding folder. At the end of each question, the instructions tell us that we need to save our file. And if we look at this instruction here for question one, you can see it says save your amended code file as q01finished.py. So the pattern is q0, the question number, finished.py. So to save time during the exam and to ensure I don't forget, I'm going to rename each of these files now. So I'm going to start by renaming this first file q01finished.py and the second file q02finished.py and I'm going to keep doing this all the way through. Now if you're wondering how is he doing this so quickly, it's because I've already copied the word finish and I'm just pasting it. So that's something you can do to save yourself time. And from now on, I'm going to work with these files. I'm not going to work with the files called Q01, Q02. I'm going to work with these finished files so that I can leave all the other files as they were. I won't forget to rename them. And I've got a backup if I need to go back to it. Let's summarise what we have done. Before the exam started, we set up our screen to maximise the space that we have available and we checked that all the files were where they needed to be. We've made sure that we have line numbers showing in our IDE and we've thought about how to make the best use of the programming language subset. We've also considered other software that we could use, such as Funny or Notepad++. Once the exam had started, we made two copies of the original student coding folder 
and renamed one of those folders Completed Coding. We then renamed all the files in Completed Coding to be the finished files ready to work on them. You're now ready to start looking at the questions. You can choose to watch the Walking Talking Mock for Edexcel's 2022 Paper 2 Question 1 or you can visit www.paulong.net forward slash WT Mocks to gain access to a walkthrough of each question in each exam.